Hi, everybody. Um, I'm very excited to be speaking with you today. My name is Joni Hallaby, my her, and I am a senior web developer with Georgetown University. Uh, today, I'm going to be speaking on data visualization in WordPress. Um, if you have any have any questions, um, I won't be able to take questions during this talk. But um, please use the um, the attendees channel in Slack. Um, I understand that the Q and A is not working, so please direct any questions to the attendees channel, and I will answer them as soon as I can today. Uh, so let's dive in. Um, so let's set up the scene. Uh, let's say that um, one of your colleagues from, let's say, the admissions office wants to put up a graph of how many students from each class year will be returning to campus this fall. And this person gives us a giant spreadsheet that looks something like this. So we have a whole bunch of students and their class levels, and we need to kind of collate this into a single graph. So what is our quest? Uh, we want to um, display this chart, and we're going to create a custom Gutenberg block to do this. So fantastic. We have three steps in order to accomplish this. Uh, we first need to import our data into WordPress. Um, we need to process that data so we have uh, something that's usable in order to make our graph. And then we need to actually display an accessible and responsive graph. So first up, let's import this data. Um, what we really want to do is have our block store the URL of our Google Sheet um, so that it can grab all of our data whenever it wants to. It's basically on demand. As the Google Sheet gets updated, um, our block will have the most up-to-date information. So in our Gutenberg block, we're going to have um, a text control that looks something like this in our edit function. So we'll have the text control. We can have a label, some help. Um, our value will be the Google, um, the URL of our Google Sheet. and we'll just throw in an on-change uh, function to make sure that that Google Sheet URL gets saved. Um, step two is we need to extract the data. So because our data could change because it's coming from a Google Sheet, we really need this block to be a dynamic block. Um, so instead of our save function being a part of the JavaScript, the save function is actually going to be part of the PHP. And we're going to have a render function that will extract and process the data um, so the first thing that we need to do is have our render function call the Google API to go grab the data. So we grab, um, we grab the Google API, we um, tell it what the sheet, the sheet ID is, which we extract from the, um, the URL that the block is storing. Um, in an implementation that I used, I actually also have a content editor uh, tell me the range of values from our spreadsheet. So if you remember the spreadsheet, there's only one column that has the, uh, the list of class, uh, class years for the students. So that range can, can, uh, can store whatever that column ID is. Um, and then you also want to have your block store your API key. Um, so so this is something that you can have a content editor uh, put in the block itself, or you can have a separate settings page um, that I'm calling out of scope for this particular talk, but you can basically set up a settings page that um, can allow uh, your content editors to store an API key so that Google can uh, grab that data. So now that we have the data, we need to process the data so we, we can graph it. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to convert the data into something that PHP can read. And we're going to do that using the JSON decode function. And once we do that, we'll get um, an array that looks something like this. So we'll have a parent array that will have a few other things in it. But the part of this array that we want is what's going to be stored in this values item that is also going to be a subarray that's going to be an array of our data. There's a lot of nested arrays going on here, which is why we need to do a little bit more work to process our data. Um, so step two, let's remember our problem. 
We have we have this array that gives us a list of all of the uh, the class years of our students. But what we really need is accounts of how many students are coming in from each class year. So what we need to do is loop through our array. Um, we're going to create a second array uh, that will store the data that we'll use for the graph. And we're going to loop through the array of values that we got from our Google Sheets. And what this loop is doing is basically saying, um, does, uh, uh, do we already have an account for each class year set up in my new data array? And then if I do, if I've already counted a freshman or a sophomore or a junior or a senior, let's just add one to that count. Otherwise, I want to create a brand new count. So basically, I'm just creating four different bins in this case, one for each class year. And I'm adding, I'm adding one to each of these bins. So I get a total sum of how many students are coming in from each class year. Um, so if we want to look at this in code, this is now what my, um, my processed array looks like, which is much, much cleaner. I have a single non-nested array. Um, that has four items, one for each class tier, and the value of each item is the count. Um, so I can see I have eight of everybody except for juniors. I have 12 juniors coming back. So chapter three, this is the fun part. We are going to make um, an, access, an accessible and responsive graph out of this massage data. So it's basically going to look something like this. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to actually uh, create our own SVG by hand. This is not scary, I promise, um, to create that graph. So first we need to set up our SVG. Um, so we're going to have our SVG, um, our SVG parent. Uh, it's going to have a width of 100% because I wanted to take up the full, um, the full width. And I'm going to calculate my SVG height. We'll get back to that in a bit. Um, for accessibility purposes, I'm going to have a title and a description in my SVG, and that is actually information that um, that can get read by a screen reader if somebody can't actually physically see the um, uh, the chart. The screen reader will go ahead and read this uh, this data that's in here. Um, now, the SVG height is going to be automatically calculated based on the size of my data array times how much um, how high I want each of my bars to be and how much gap I want in between each bar. Um, so step two, I need to create my X and Y axis because you don't have a graph without axes. Um, so these axes are basically just going to be line SVG elements. Um, they're going to have a role of presentation because they're not really giving me any sort of information about the data. They're just there for visual purposes. Um, so my y-axis, that's the one that goes up and down. Um, I'm going to have it offset a little bit, so I leave myself some room for labels. Um, so my x1 and x2 are going to be offset. Um, y1 is going to start at 0 all the way at the top. And y2 is going to be the height of my graph. And I'm basically just doing the same thing with my x-axis, just sort of rotated 90 degrees. Um, step three, let's actually create the bottom part. Um, so I want to create a group for all of my bars so that um, screen readers or anybody who's trying to, um, uh, any technology that's trying to parse this SVG will know that all of these bars go together. And I'm going to give this group the role of a list because if you think about it, your graph is basically just a list of a whole bunch of data. Um, it's sort of like an unordered list where all of the bars are part of the list and each bar is its own list item. So kind of a spoiler alert for later on. Um, but for each bar, we're going to loop through, the through our array of data. Um, we're going to create a group uh, for each bar. Uh, that's going to be our list item. And each, each of these uh, groups for the, 
for the individual bar is going to contain an SVG element for the bar itself, the text label for that bar, and optionally a description. Um, and that's also more for screen reader purposes if you want to give a little bit more context around each bar or if you want to give a definition. So if you want to say, this is the bar for my freshman class. Freshmen are generally first year students, yada, yada, yada. Um, so each bar is going to look like this. So I have a child group in my parent, um, in my parent list group. Uh, this child group is going to have a role of list item. So uh, in HTML terms, that's kind of like my LI to my UL. Um, I can give each group an ARIA label, and I like putting both the label and the data information in the ARIA label. Um, and again, this allows um, allows screen readers to read what exactly is going on with this particular bar. Um, giving this group a tab index of zero makes this group tabbable if somebody needs to um, tab through each of the bars in the screen in the in the graph. And then I can optionally have my description here if I need some more information. And then I'm going to have my bar and my label elements. So my bar elements, a bar is just a rectangle. So I'm creating a rectangle with a role of presentation. I'm going to offset it a little bit uh, to give myself room for the label. And then this Y value is interesting. So the Y value is basically going to be the number of bars so far. Um, so my bars don't overlap with each other um, times the bar height in the bar graph. Um, the width is going to be based on the value and the bar height is, is that set number. Now my bar's width will be automatically calculated um, to be whatever the value is divided by the maximum value times 100. So basically what I'm trying to do is give the width of the bar uh, or set the width of the bar as a percentage of how many students are coming in this class level. Um, and then I have my text element. Um, which is I'm setting to be the label uh, of the bar. Um, I'm setting that to be all the way on the left-hand side of my graph. Um, and then all together, I have my outer group of my list. Um, we have our uh, the inner groups that are the list items with my description, again, my bar and my text value for the label. And that just keeps going and going and going and we're looping through our data. And this is, this is the meat of our graph. And then we get a graph that looks like this. It's beautiful, it's accessible, um, because we're using a lot of, um, because we, uh, we're setting the bar widths as percentages, it's also responsive. So um, it's usable in most cases, which is, that's the goal we were going for. And that is it. Thank you so much. Um, Feel free to follow me on Twitter. Um, if you tweet at me, I will tweet back eventually. I'm a little slow on Twitter. I apologize. Um, the slides are also available um, online at this URL. I will tweet out the URL as well. Um, and again, please leave questions in the Slack attendees channel. Thank you so much.